Hi, I'm Crystal Hart and welcome to the Crystal Hart Show. We are at the final press conference leading up to the 115th Milrose Games, which is indoor track and field's most prestigious event. And now, let's meet some of the athletes. Sprinters, basically, we trained our endurance first because you have to have a base. So the base that we do will last for about two to three months. And we're just, you know, gaining our endurance so that we can go through the whole year because we pretty much race all year. You know, we race from January to October. It's a long year. Uh, so you got to be able to make it the whole way. Then we'll start working on speed endurance. So this is probably when you'll see people who are like doing 400s and um, anytime you want to be able to finish a race, that's the type of work we're doing in the middle of the year. So probably around March, April, and May. Then finally, you'll get into uh, June, July, and August, and you're just working on pure speed. So now you're doing all the, the fast things, you know, all that stuff that you see that uh, on social media, like Usain Bolt probably doing like a really quick start or something like that. That's what we do. <laughs> so I recently just hired a personal chef to help me with my diet. He works with my nutritionist, and our diet is really consistent of make sure that we get in a lot of vegetables. Um, the protein would be the next biggest thing, and then finally would be the starches. Um, it's not so much based off of how much, you know, of each, like, it, it's not so much about calories intake, it's more based off of what we need at that time of the year. So if, if we're doing that conditioning piece in the beginning of the year, I'm gonna need a lot of vegetables to get a lot of the vitamins and iron and protein that I, or not protein, but you know, uh, other minerals that I'm not able to get. And then I'm gonna need a lot of protein to build up that muscle so that I can continuously go every day and keep running. You know, I have a question. Uh, my nephew plays baseball. Okay. Power hitter, great fielder, but just uh, the running. And he wants to know what can he do to make himself faster. And he's a bigger build, sort of like Josh, but not quite that big. Yeah. Yeah, the, the key about sprinting specifically is your body mass is going to determine how fast you go. If you have a lot of muscle, but you can't carry that over a long period of time, then you're going to be slow. It's all about finding that middle area about how much muscle do you need to efficiently move. Too much will make you slow. Too little will get you injured. It's all about finding that sweet spot. This is Katie Moon, and she is with uh, pole vaulting. And is that an Olympic necklace around? It is an Olympic necklace. Um, my my friends and my mom got this for me right after I made the team, and uh, it's really special. I I'm not a big tattoo person, so I I didn't think I would get the rings, and so this is kind of my tattoo, and I. I love it. It's really special. Oh, I love it also. Thank you. I, I noticed it right away. <laughs> now, Katie, tell us a little bit about pole uh, vaulting and, and like, what is it? Strength? Is it? Uh, what are all the elements? Yeah. So pole vault really is every everything. It's you need speed, you need strength, and it's it's mental as well um, because what we're doing is kind of scary. It goes against what you're naturally wanting to do from a safety standpoint, you know, running down full speed with a 15-foot pole in your hand, you know, 14-foot pole in your hands, and just trusting that that's going to get you safely into the pit, it, it kind of goes against human nature, so, um, and I've definitely experienced kind of those those fears, and, um, but yeah, you, we, we lift, we sprint without a pole, we pole vault, we do plyometrics, so we work on on jumping, so I, I mean, it requires, you know, every every bit of, I guess, athleticism. Now we're here at the Millrose Games indoor track and field's finest. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your competition. Yeah, so the competition's going to be a very good one. We have a lot of really good girls competing. Last week, um, Bridget won, and she's looking great right now. She's really kind of coming into her own and. Um, Kat Stefaniti was the Olympic champion before I was the Olympic champion, and she's always a very good competitor. Um, we have the, the high school twins, the mall twins, that have been just blowing it up. First high schooler to ever jump 15 feet, and 
if you're jumping 15 feet, no matter what age level you're at, you're going to be competitive at a professional meet. And my training partner, Gabby Leon, so um, Emily Grove, it's going to be a really good, good, strong competition, which is nice because I know that I have to come in and I can't, I can't relax. I have to come in and really focus on what I'm capable of doing and just it, it keeps me honest and holds me accountable so I'm, I'm excited. Workouts I was doing leading up to you know running uh, most of my professional career was on my own and now I have two of the best runners in the world right next to me enjoying it laughing having a great time. Uh, it's a very surreal thing it's very nice um, it isn't as realistic as you think you know having that kind of talent all together but somehow we're making it work right now and we know that regardless, you know, when we get to that start line, it's all business, all competing to win, um, all trying to run really fast times. And then when we hit the finish line, we're all mates again. We're all gonna, you know, the sun will rise tomorrow and if you have a good one, you can celebrate it. If you have a bad one, you know, you just gotta shake it off. So we have a great environment at the moment and uh, the three of us are very, very lucky that we just, we kind of get that situation. and. I'm keeping my cards close. I know Yared will keep it close. And Dathan's also going to separately talk to us individually and be able to kind of say, okay, this is your strategy to win. This is Ollie's strategy to win. This is Yared's strategy to win. You know, I'm going to tell these boys what they're going to do. They're going to go out and race and just let it let it happen. So that's our plan, yeah. What about Cole? I mean, you can't overlook Cole. You never overlook Cole. And he's the one that we don't know about. Like, you know, like I, obviously there's little things that their race strategy and the way they're going to go into the race for Mario and Yarrod, I don't know. But I don't know anything about Cole, you know. He's, he's come off a tough um, season, you know. Like, he, he definitely, after the Olympics, was somebody that was going to be incredible for the U.S. in the mid-distance range, and he kind of struggled a little bit. But I, I definitely don't doubt him. He's an incredible competitor, in, incredible in, indoors, you know, after what he did uh, in NCAA. Probably one of the craziest uh, competitions I've ever seen from a mid-distance athlete. I don't think anybody else has gotten close to doing what he did, winning the mile, winning the 3K. Um, in such a spectacular fashion, so yeah, he's definitely going to be in the in the cards, and I and I believe that um, personally that there'll be four guys, him included, um, near that end with four hundred to go, and then when it gets to that type of the race, it's who wants it more and who's able to to, to follow through with it. And Cole's definitely going to be there and going to be a competitor. And uh, Mario, Yara, and myself. We know he's there, we're going to compete with him and we're going to try and make it as exciting as possible. We're going out in a really hot pace um, and I think me, Mario and Ollie are definitely all just trying to stay on it and really kind of, you know, get after it the best we can so that we can just see what we're capable of. I think uh, we all had really good training and we can run something really fast and so um, it's definitely just go out, get out fast and then just kind of race each other at the end. Tell me a little bit about your training. Yeah, I mean, um, it's been all very like strength based and we've all been um, just kind of together in on it and doing like some speed work kind of sprinkled in there but um, you know it's been it's been a nice adjustment getting used to altitude I never did altitude before in college and so um, I think that's really helped me kind of you know grow and get stronger aer aerobically wise and tell me how do you get what, what do you have to say to um, people that are trying to run how do they get faster I think um, I think there's two key parts. One is make sure you're having fun, which I feel like you can't really do alone. So like kind of grab someone and make sure that you're in it together. I feel like, you know, if you don't really enjoy running, you definitely will not get better above all. And I've always made sure that I've always had fun doing this. Otherwise, I would stop immediately. And the second thing is um, just consistency and training. You know, never blow one workout out of the water or something. It's all just about like making sure you stay with several good efforts in a row. Because if you can't do that, then like on race day, you know, it's going to be hit or miss on whether you're going to be there or not. So, um, yeah, consistency and fun. And, and what type of nutrition? Do you have a certain nutrition? <laughs> um, no, I, I'm, I'm very uh, kind of eat what I want and just eat a lot. That, that's my, yeah, that, that's my big thing is just eat as much as possible. Because <laughs> I feel like, you know, as I might come off very skinny and I am. But like it is, I think nutrition and just eating as much as you can at being a distance runner is so important. Um, and maybe like a few days before, I'll focus more on carbs and getting that in. But other than that, no, I, I'm just eat what I want when I want. And, and what's next? After this, I'm going to Madrid, uh, right straight from here. And uh, me and Mario are going to be racing at the Madrid Indoor Tour um, on February 22nd in the 1500. And when does outdoors? It'll probably, yeah, yeah. It'll be like end of April, beginning of May. Um, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to open up yet, but um, it'll still be like a couple months from now. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow.
with this Ryan Krauser world record holder and double Olympic champion in shot put. Ryan, first off, tell us technique or power? What's more? Um, I couldn't put one or, over the other. I, if I had to choose, I'd probably say technique. Um, if you have good technique and not much power, the shot's still going to go. If you have a lot of power and no technique, shots aren't really going to go anywhere. So if I had to choose one, I'd choose technique. But if you want to throw far, you need both. Now, you said you're going to change your technique on, on this. Uh, I guess you, we, we'll, we'll find out tomorrow, but, but why? And uh, Yeah, so I've... I've been working on a new technique in the shot, um, and I think people are a bit surprised that it's coming from me having been the world record holder and, and two-time Olympic champion, but for me, it's all in the interest of throwing farther. I think this new technique can let me throw farther than I could with, with the old technique, so we'll see how it how it goes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still very early in the evolution of it, and I'm still making a lot of changes to it, but um, it's it's all in the interest of hopefully furthering furthering my world record. Now, if it's not going well tomorrow, are you going to go back to your regular? Yeah, so I'm going to start conservative. I'll start with my regular way in the in the first round and hopefully get a solid mark out there. It's, it is still the first meet of the year, and so we'll probably have a few kinks to iron out. But hopefully by the later rounds, once I get a respectable mark in round one or two, then hopefully start building on it and switch to the new technique. Now. I'm a little confused. You're going against the women also? I mean, how, how will that work? Is that, is that, is that fair? Oh, uh, so I think it, we're just doing the co-ed comp. So we'll have a men's winner, winner and a women's winner. Um, yeah, because if you had the men thrown against the women, the, it'd, be, it'd be a tough day for the women. But um, it should be fun for the crowd watching. It's four, four men, four women, so it'll go really quick. Um, and so it should be a, it should be a fun comp, and it's a, a good opportunity to showcase both the men's throws and the women's throws. And you were also what team captain at the what US ATF or? Yeah, so I was. Well, tell me about that. Yeah, so I was voted team captain for the US ATF World Championship team this past year in Oregon, uh, which was a huge honor for me just to be able to be recognized as and voted as team captain. The, the best part of that is that it's a nomination by your peers. So all the members of the team get one vote and they elect a captain to just as a figurehead, but also kind of help out day to day. Let let the staff and the coaches know issues or and it's little things. It was like, can we keep breakfast open for 30 more minutes? Because some athletes are, are wanting to sleep in and things like that. And so uh, transportation issues. So. It, it was just a huge honor to be recognized by my fellow peers as, as choosing me to, to kind of be a figurehead and, and help them hopefully solve some of the smaller issues and uh, help out the team any way I can. But yeah, it was it was a huge honor for me and I'm, it's something I'm very, very proud of. Well, that says a lot about you, you know, with your peers wanting you and your leadership. So you're a leader. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was a really great opportunity. It's something that I've always dreamed about being. Um, I mean, out of all of the accolades and, and titles I've won, to be recognized by your fellow teammates as them wanting you to be their leader is, is, is truly a, a, a huge achievement for me and, and something, yeah, that, that all, one of my fondest memories of, of all of track and field. With this Chase Ely and with shot put. Now, first of all, tell me, they, they said they're going to mix the men and women. Uh, t tell me how that's going to work. Um, so I think in this one they're going to do a man throwing and a woman throwing and then a man throwing, um, which is fine. I, I always like, you know, um, co-ed competitions. Uh, my only problem is that, like, the indoor tour is a women's tour, like, this year. So in my opinion, it should just be women because um, it was just men last year during their tour. But um, I, I do like competing with the boys. Um, but yeah, that's, it, 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 it's pretty cool. They, they push us to throw better, I think. But there's certain things that like, um, there's certain events and stuff that go on in, in track and, and like, um, for instance, the Indoor Gold Tour, it, it's really important and it creates like uh, automatic buys to other competitions. Um, and so this is kind of like, the men coming kind of puts a damper in like our point system for the tour. Um, but like I said, I love throwing with them. I just wish the rest of my girls were here. What do you think they did it for time? Or, or 
Um, I think it's because, like, this is an American meet, uh, and we are, like, known for shot put. Um, usually, like, five of the top ten in, in the world are from the U.S. Um, and the men are really good, so I'm not surprised. Um, uh, to have like at an American meet that they want more American shot putters uh, so to do that you would have the boy the men and the women and so what's more important power or, or technique um, I would say at this stage in our careers technique um, it's it gets so technical as you keep going for like centimeter by centimeter um, once you've thrown so far you really have to start getting that technique honed down and perfect. Hi, I'm Crystal Hart and welcome to the Crystal Hart Show. We are at the Armory in Washington Heights in New York City and this is the Millrose Games, indoor track and field's most prestigious event. And now, let's talk to some of the athletes about their performance. I only felt pretty good. I don't think my start was as good as it's been, but I mean, I was patient and just completed the race. You've been clicking off these times way faster than your old personal best. What's the, what do you attribute that consistency to? Um, my training. We've been doing a lot of training, a lot of weight work, a lot of weight, uh, work in the weight room, so I think that's just paying off. And how do you kind of deal with, you know, a little bit of pressure and knowing that, you know, the media kind of looks at you as a top woman right now. How do you kind of deal with that pressure coming into, you know, Easter races? Um, I don't really think about it. So, I just be like, all right, another race and focus on the race and just put this to the side. And I learned that you and Makaya Briscoe, y'all have been training since I were like nine years old or competing with each other. With each other. Talk to me about that relationship a little bit. Um, me and Makaya family, like real sisters. We've been doing this for so long together. Um, our races, she have a good start, have a good finish. So training is perfect. We just help each other work on different things and motivate each other. So that make a big difference too. Do you have a little bit of friendly competition where it's like, you know, she ran 699, you ran 698, like, y'all you have a little friendly competition? Yeah, so I, she ran 699, I ran 698. Now she got to do 697, I got to do 696, and we're going to keep going. <laughs> so y'all got to get down we to 690 like or something. Yep. There yep. you go, there you go. Hey, when you're in a weight room, uh, what weights are you talking about? Small ones, 10-pounders, or, or heavy? Or um, not heavy, but moving the bar fast. And I'm actually squatting for the first time. Because I had knee surgery on both knees, so I wasn't able to squat for years. So last year was my first year, like, really actually doing squats. So, hey, I think the squats are working. Meaningful you this season to be so consistent? I mean, you can't always run a PB, but, it's, you know, it's, it's also hard to run a really good time every time. Uh, consistency is the key. That's what I'm um, trying to keep going. The last time I was this consistent was my senior year of college, and that was a great season. So I'm just planning on keeping going. It's outdoor. What, what's been like one of the most enjoyable parts of running indoors this year? Um, winning. Winning is fun. <laughs> I'll say winning is the most enjoyable part already had a team meeting about it. We knew it was going to be a really close call. So, you know, we've been doing back-to-back -back runs in practice, so it was really nothing for us. We just had to, you know, center ourselves, cool down after three, and just get back after it and remember our technique, remember our form, because we know that that's what's going to pull through in the end. Hi, my name is Myla. I'm a senior. I'm a 2-4 in sprint hurdler. Um, I think the race went pretty good. I executed both my races, and I felt pretty good. Hi, I'm Mariah. I'm a senior and I'm a 2-4 runner and I think my two races went well. You know, I executed and did and I gave everything I had. So. Hi, I'm Sage Henson and I'm a senior. I run the 2 and the 4 and I think my work, my races today went pretty well. You know, I, I wanted to focus on technical execution today and so I feel like that's what I did. Hi, my name is Sydney Sutton. I'm a sophomore and I'm a 2-4 runner. I think my two races went pretty well today. I was focusing on execution, making sure that I finished and I started well. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. My name is Travis Williams. I'm from Upstate. Um, I'm from the Bronx. I go to Albany. I just came third in the 60 meter dash with Noah and Coleman. I ran 6.59. Uh, and I ran that out of hallways. If you, if, you never, if you never knew, I just ran that out of hallways, guy. No track, no nothing, hallways and mats. That's, what, that's where I'm coming from. I'm always grateful. I'm humble. I want bigger heights. I want bigger things. Nationals bound. First, I was just going to go off, but I wanted to know what they caught me on. So I went over. Uh, before I even got there, he said, do you want to run under protest? And I said, you know what? Yeah. You know, uh, I've said it many times, the indoor season is to work on things. 
And when he said that, my first thought was, if I can get the race in, that's all that matters. I don't care if I win, if I lose, if I can work on what I need to work on, that's all that matters. And uh, to be honest, I'm very glad I did because yeah. I got a time that I'm very happy to see. I was about to say, 6 five, 3 right? Like, yeah. that's even faster than your old personal best. Yeah. Last year, what's that like? It's, I'm very excited to see that. Um, number one, because this is a one-off. And I've already explained a lot how running rounds really helps me. I mean, we all saw what happened to Trayvon. You know, you get three rounds, you run 642. Like, shoot, give me three rounds. I run 642 also. Sure. What, what do you think about that? Where you know you see Trayvon clicking off these fast times, kind of a little. I don't know if he had a spark after you did that. What do you think about going into USA's next? Hey man, I just put a fire up in his belly. He did the work. Um, uh, but that's exactly what I want to see. You know, if somebody gets beat, we go back to the grinding stone. We come back harder than ever. You know. Did that start throughout your game at all? We moved down to the other Oh no, nah. I've, I've raced against Christian and Trayvon and many times. So. Starts like that, don't frazzle me. Uh, when? I know, I didn't hear anything. Did you think you both started? I didn't think I did. I mean, it was um, it was definitely a little bit of movement, but I would it never left the pad. And you know, if, if they caught something, I would love to see it. Um, truthfully, if I went up there and they had you know that of it, I would just left. We saw it affect Devin Allen at Worlds. No, it definitely needs to be changed. There is, there's, there's really no data. Like people keep saying, oh, we have this one data point, but that one data point was done not only before um, pressure sensor blocks was made, but the group size was so small. You know, that's, that's basically nothing. If, if you took that to a scientist, they said you have nothing. Do you have a good reaction time? Like, have you tested ever? I mean, I've seen my reaction time. It's, it's nothing special. It's pretty average. It's, it can be pretty better than others, but it's nothing to be like, it's not Devin Allen. It's not Devin Allen, and it's not Marvin Bracey. Yeah, thank you so much. It was really good comp. Uh, season's best. Did everything go like you planned it? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with an injury, uh, so it was a little off, and I've been a little off, so I'm really happy. Um, it's about as good as I can get right now. Like the format or the way they were doing it out there with the men and women all together? Uh, yeah, I mean, it is, our, it should be a women's meet, but like if they do it, I really like, I liked the way they did it one and then the other. That was cool. Um, but yeah, just not a lot of warm up time, the usual stuff they do to us, so. What's next? I have indoor nationals and then uh, one more meet and I'm done. So I'm adding degrees of rotation and a longer lateral step to the left. So it's significantly more to go wrong, uh, but it does generate quite a bit more power. And so essentially adding a sprint step and a, and a drive across into a traditional spin. So that reinvention is what gives you the idea that you can go farther than you ever have before. Yeah, so in training, it's, I'm not going far because it's December, January, uh, early February, but the spread from what I throw from a static to a step across compared to my normal full has been, has been a really good spread. So hopefully I can capture some of that. Going forward, it's definitely a little bit of a challenge. First, I'm doing it in a meet, it's just because that tendency to get tight and try to force it. If I do that with a new technique, it's not gonna, it doesn't go very far. So, um, got some kinks to iron out, but I was, I was happy with it. You just wanted to know how that new technique went. Yeah, it was overall good. Um, consistency was a little bit off, but I did throw farther with that than I did uh, with this with my standard start. So it, it did add some, and the biggest thing was that the throw that I had that was the 2258 was not especially good. So um, to throw 2258 on a relatively bad throw definitely definitely was a good start and um, got some stuff to work on now because you can practice it and practice it but then you get in the meet and you don't really know where things are going to break down. So I uh, learned, learned what I was doing wrong and so excited to kind of work on that in training and then hopefully come back to it and see if, see if I can add some more to it this next week. Talking about training, I was watching you on YouTube with those squats, and you got a dog that looks like my dog at home, but my dog's like 11 years old. Yeah, so it's been great. We got a puppy this past fall, so a little coat of bears at home right now, but um, excited to get back to her. And yeah, she she spends a lot of time with me out in the gym, so we're working on her behavior. She's five-ish months, so we're, lear we're learning to, to sit 
well between sets. She, as she knows all her commands, it's now it's the attention span of if I have to make her sit for a minute or two while I'm lifting, and then she can come on the platform. But it's been a lot of fun. She's cute. She steals the show sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. Our training group is incredible. I mean, there's just so many stars in their events, and um, that's something that Coach Holloway always said to the team last year was, you need to be comfortable um, being one of the best girls in the country, in the world, but not being the best girl on your team. And so I think our training group embodies that. You know, you think you did something special or somebody else did something even better this weekend. And um, I think it's a really special thing that we keep each other humble, but still everyone's just pushing each other to, to reach um, higher heights. So, yeah. Any surprises out there? Or did it all go the way you had visualized? Um, I, every time, even when I know, like, I'm going to get, like, kind of rushed by the specialist, that's still a shock a little bit, but, um, I ended up being able to pull out a PB, so, um, I was happy with it, and that's what I was hoping for. So, yeah. What's next? Um, in five days, I'm going to do the pentathlon at USA Nationals, and then I'm going to do the Open Four after that, so, yeah. Congratulations, winner of the Wanamaker Mile here at Nagoose. D uh, yeah. Tell me, at what point did you think maybe you were going to break away and win it, or how yeah, I mean, um, you know, for all that, for most of that race, I felt, you know, really controlled and comfortable. And uh, kind of come that last, like, 400, 600 bit, I was feeling a little better. I can kind of feel the pace slowing down a bit. So that's kind of when I wanted to make my move and give it all I had and, you know, see what I was capable of. And I was able to kind of pull away and get that. So, yeah, very great race. Now you said a lot of you train together. So I, I, just tell me what it was like all running and, and did somebody help you out a little bit there or, or what was going through your mind? I, I loved it, honestly. I loved, like, the first half, obviously, it was all three of us kind of in together and in a row, and uh, I think I had a really good time just kind of knowing that my teammates were behind me like that, or in front of me in that case, just kind of pulling me along and all of us running together as a unit. And, you know, but, like, at the end of the day, we're competitors during a race and teammates every other time of the day, so, uh, you know, it doesn't mean I'm going to be afraid to pass them, and um, it doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, hold back anything, and I, don't, I wouldn't expect any of them to do the same, so, um, you know, very exciting, yeah. And are you part of the Fighting Irish, Notre Dame? I was. I graduated um, last year. Now I just run for OAC. But yeah. And, and what's next? Uh, next I'll be running the Madrid 1500 on February 22nd. Well, good luck there and thank you. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the Armory here in Washington Heights on the Milrose Games. Hope you've enjoyed the show and thanks for watching.